Andrew Yang, thank you uh, for being here. It is really uh, a thrill and an honor to speak with you. So. Oh, thanks, Vivian. It's, it's great to be here. Here we are. We're on the cusp of a new administration. I'm sorry it's not the Yang administration that you wanted, but it is a Democrat nonetheless. And so what are the key issues that the new administration, the Biden administration, should be focused on when it comes to issues of data and privacy? I, I think the most pressing concern for the administration is how to help the economy recover, which you don't really think of as touching data and privacy, but it actually does. Uh, because at this point, our data is getting sold and resold for tens of billions of dollars a year. Uh, and it's being sold to advertisers on social media in many instances. So we're having our democracy subverted, our mental health diminished, our ability to trust each other and objective fact reduced. Uh, so these issues are all tied together um, with an erosion of public trust. And I think that rebuilding that trust is going to be vital for the new administration to be able to accomplish its goals. What do we do about a nation that is so divided and in many ways divided based on the information and the lies and disinformation they see spreading across social media? Well, the tough part is that many people have found that it's both financially and politically to their advantage to go along with an alternate version of facts, an alternate version of reality. Uh, and that's one of the things that we have to try and address um, misinformation spread six times more powerfully than fact. Uh, and so if you make uh, a living spreading misinformation, uh, then you're more likely to lean into it in this instance, rather than try and bring your viewers back uh, to, for example, the fact that Donald Trump got fewer votes in Pennsylvania or Arizona or Georgia. Uh, and so we have to try and address what these incentives are uh, and put some rules of the road in for what's considered news uh, and for what can spread on social media in a way that reaches millions or tens of millions of Americans. Well, and what do those rules look like? I mean, are we talking about regulating the platforms, regulating the news media? How does that manifest itself? Well, right now you have Facebook uh, operating under a 21 word clause of a law that was written in 1996 before Section they even existed. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. So if you uh, imagine that DC has legislation in place to address these issues, of course it doesn't. They wrote a rule before anyone even knew what, that Facebook would ever exist. So what's required now is to modernize our, our approach to these platforms to try and get to the root of why misinformation is spreading so viscerally and powerfully, what the economic incentives are, there should be at a minimum an ad-free version of these platforms that people can opt into because a lot of the uh, economic power is tied to selling our data to advertisers. And so if you remove that as an incentive, then you can see the practices change on these platforms quite quickly. Of course, though, what you're describing is the foundation of their business model itself. Well, for Facebook, they now have something like 3 billion users worldwide. I mean, a significant chunk of their revenue comes from uh, American users, but if you had an American ad-free version of Facebook, it would not meaningfully, uh, I mean, meaningfully, but it, it wouldn't turn them into a non-growth company, let's put it that way. But maybe not the kind of exponential growth that their shareholders might like. Yeah, you know, I mean, last I checked, they're worth $650 billion uh, and growing. So, you know, like uh, they can use a little bit of uh, friction in their lives. So one of the things that you recommended when when you were running was the formation of a of a new federal government department, the Department of Attention Economy. Um, what would that department do? And do you think, are you in conversation with the Biden administration? Do you think that there's a version of that that could, that could come to pass? Uh, I think it's imperative that we have something like a Department of the Attention Economy that gets into the guts of the design choices that these social media giants are making that are eroding the mental health of our children. Uh, teenage girls in particular are seeing surges in anxiety and depression. Uh, I am in touch with the Biden administration generally. <laughs> you know, I, I texted uh, Kamala a congratulatory note um, not, not that long ago. Um, but there are a, a number of things that uh, I think we need to address as a country. And if they give me an opportunity to address something significant, um, uh, I'll likely jump at it. Oh, great. Well, we will, we will look for that. Um, and you're particularly focused. One of the things that was a huge part of your platform is about data ownership and taking data ownership and giving the people, the so-called users, <laughs> otherwise known as the citizens of the public, control over the data that is collected by these tech companies, right? 
Yes, thank you, California. You yeah. passed Prop 24. <laughs> you made it so that people actually have data rights and protections in California. And if you are not in California, do you really want the people of California to have their data be safeguarded better than yours? Go to your state legislature and say, hey, you should adopt this too. Why do Californians have these rights and protections? They actually have a dedicated agency now to protect their data in California. Doesn't that sound cool? Don't you want that in Pennsylvania, New York, Washington, Michigan, wherever? And there's real money on the line. Facebook just paid $650 million for misuse of data to Illinois Facebook users. It's uh, up to $400 a user. There's, some, <laughs> there's a, a lot of value in our data. And thanks to California, we're going to start seeing more of it actually reach people as opposed to all getting hoovered up by the tech companies. Yeah. I am Andrew Yang and I approve this message. <laughs> what? Uh... Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> oh, you know, I did run for president. I mean, yeah, uh, I know, you, I know. You, can, you can stick me into candidate mode and I'll get excited. But I'm genuinely really thrilled <laughs> no, about Prop 24. Thank you, California. You did it. As an individual, I am not a California citizen or a resident of California. But if I was, uh, what does that mean for me exactly? Uh, now, all of a sudden, the tech companies have all of these obligations where your data is concerned. They have to audit it. They have to let you opt out of geotargeting. They have to have more protections for minors. And if they fail in these regards, then there's a dedicated protection agency that exists just to make sure that they're complying. Uh, and this is a game changer. The tech companies didn't like it. Shocker. <laughs> Any other uh, words uh, for us about... Um about uh, what's possible now when it comes to uh, technology platforms and user data? We have to face facts that the problems are getting bigger, not smaller. Uh, and so we need to rise to that challenge uh, and also acknowledge that in many of these cases, market forces are cutting uh, against us rather than for us. Uh, so you need a public sector that actually understands these issues at a deeper level. Congress has not had any independent guidance on technology related issues since 1995, when they got rid of the Office of Technology Assessment. Uh, so it's time to modernize our approach to these issues. Uh, and hopefully, there'll be some people watching this who want to lend a hand. We will see and hope that there is more, more information and more help coming. Um, thank you, Andrew. It was really a pleasure uh, to speak with you. And um, we, will, we will see you soon. Thank you, Vivian. <laughs> Excited to help inaugurate this platform. I love <laughs> entrepreneurship generally. So, you know, I hear something new. Something okay. new happens. Andrew Yang's into it. <laughs>